Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the generic goblin gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Just a heads up, but Flipside Gaming is going to be giving away a Zendikar Rising set booster box. The contest will run from August 31st all the way to September 25th, 2020. The typical rules apply of one entry per household. You'll be entered for your chance to win when you use my promo code on an order of $10 or more, or if you send Flipside Gaming a stamped self-addressed envelope or postcard to the address found above. So good luck and have fun. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game is another Game Breakers gang game, with me playing my old Erebos deck. I keep a Terrain Generator, Leech Ridden Swamp, Nevin Yarl's Disc, Chainer, Sower of Discord, Thespian Stage, and Knight's Whisper. Malcolm is playing Vishkal, Keeping Damnation, Gilded Lotus, Unburial Rites, Three Swamps, and a Plains. Ben is playing his Gave deck, Keeping a Forest, Chameleon Colossus, Skull Clamp, Plains, Dune Blast, Hardened Scales, and Citadel Siege. New to the channel is Dr. Martin playing his Raft deck, Keeping a Plains, Thespian Stage, Empress Galena, Oath of Teferi, Karn Liberated, Burnished Heart, and Elish Norn. Dr. Martin wins the roll and starts us off. Dr. Martin plays a Thespian Stage, passing. Ben plays a Tap Vivid Meadow. I play a Tap Leech Within Swamp. Malcolm plays a Plains. Dr. Martin plays a Plains as well. Ben's turn has him playing a Forest, and he casts Hardened Scales. He then plays out Skull Clamp, passing. On my second turn, I play my second Land Drop, Ghost Quarter, and continue with the trend of twos, paying two mana for Knight's Whisper, drawing two cards, and losing two life. Malcolm plays a Swamp. Dr. Martin plays a Rogue's Passage, and casts Burnished Heart, hoping it'll make it to his next turn. Ben plays a Plains, and casts Yong Yong. I play a Terrain Generator, and cast Lightning Greaves. Malcolm plays a Command Tower, and plays Weathering Wretch. Dr. Martin draws, but has no land to play. He sacrifices the Burnished Heart as he passes to Ben. Ben untaps as Dr. Martin finds two islands. He draws, and has nothing to play as well, passing. I play a Thespian Stage for my land drop, and cast Mizumi Grave Robber. I give it the Greaves, and swing it at Zyong before passing. At the end of my turn, Malcolm exiles a card from my graveyard with a Withering Wretch. Malcolm draws, plays a Swamp, and passes. Dr. Martin draws, and passes. Ben draws, and pays 3 mana for a Beastmaster Ascension. I tap out my main phase for Nevin Jarl's Disc. I then go to combat, taking out the Planeswalker with the Grave Robber. And at the end of turn, Malcolm exiles another card from my graveyard. Malcolm plays a Plains and taps out for Gilded Lotus. He then taps the Lotus for Luminarch Ascension, passing. At the end of turn, Dr. Martin flashes out Wrath. Dr. Martin draws and casts his own main phase Lotus. He passes while Malcolm puts a counter onto his Ascension. Ben is stuck on lands and has to pass. This gives Malcolm another counter on his ascension at the end of turn. I draw for turn and play out Thought Vessel. I go to combat, swinging the Grave Robber at Malcolm, who blocks with the Wretch and we trade. I then pass and Malcolm gets his third counter. Malcolm draws and plays a Tap Secluded Step, passing. Dr. Martin goes to combat, hitting Malcolm with his Flying Commander. He then casts Tezzeret the Seeker in his post-combat main phase, and upticks the walker to untap the lotus he used to help him cast it. Ben plays out a Swamp, and casts Forgotten Ancient. With nothing else, he passes, and Malcolm gains the fourth and final counter he needs for his ascension. I respond to this by activating my disc, blowing up all enchantments, creatures, and artifacts. And Dr. Martin flashes out Venser before losing his flash-granting commander to the command zone. I play a Swamp for turn, and cast Polluted Bonds. Malcolm draws, and passes. 
Dr. Martin plays a planes and loses two life while I gain two life because of the polluted bonds trigger. He then down ticks Tezzeret by four to tutor for an artifact that costs four or less, putting out Thran Dynamo. He then up ticks Fencer, exiling Tezzeret until the end of turn, and shortcuts just returning the planeswalker as he passes. Ben removes a counter from his Vivid Meadow to help pay for Chameleon Colossus, passing. I draw, and have to pay two black and two colorless to cast Besiege the Queen, going to find a card with a converted mana cost of five or less. I reveal an Urborg and play it as my land for turn before passing. Malcolm draws and has to pass. At the end of turn, Dr. Martin flashes back out Wrath. Dr. Martin starts his turn, drawing and playing a Prairie Stream and getting drained for two by Polluted Bonds. He floats some colorless with the Dynamo and upticks Tezzeret to untap it. He then upticks Fencer as well, and passing. Ben plays another Forest for turn, getting drained for two. He plays Citadel Siege, naming Khans, and moves to his combat step. This triggers the Siege, and he gets to put two plus one plus one counters onto his Colossus. He swings it at Dr. Martin, who, before moving to blocks, flashes out Elish Norn. He's then easily able to block the Colossus now with Elish Norn, and she takes out the Changeling before Ben passes. I play a Swamp for turn and tap 6 mana. This gets me a Sower of Discord, who enters and has me picking two opponents. I choose Dr. Martin and Malcolm, which means whenever one takes damage, so does the other. Malcolm plays an Isolated Chapel, getting drained by Polluted Bonds for two. Sadly, this is life loss and not damage, so Dr. Martin remains unscathed. Malcolm then taps out for Runescarred Demon and tutors for a card while passing. Dr. Martin plays a tap to Laria West, getting drained for another two. He then drops Oath of Teferi, which comes in, and exiles Elish Norn, but he changes his mind to a land. He then upticks Venser, exiling a land, and is able to activate Venser again because of the Oath, down ticking the walker for his emblem. Martin then upticks Tezzeret, untapping the dynamo, and then activates him for a second time, down ticking him this time to go and find another four drop. It's a Chained Veil, and Dr. Martin activates it. This gives him another activated ability with his walkers again, and uses Tezzeret to untap the Dynamo and the Veil. He has enough mana to keep doing this four more times, and he does so, upticking both walkers as he goes. He blinks some lands with Venser, and his final activation has him down taking Venser once more by eight to get a second Venser emblem in one turn. He then passes, and all of those lands that he exiled come back to bite him as he gets drained 7 times for a total of 14 life, while I gain 14. Ben casts Acidic Slime in his main phase, and it resolves to his surprise. He's happy to target the Chain Veil, and the table is even happier when Dr. Martin is sad to see it destroyed. Ben then goes to combat, putting the counters from his Siege Trigger on the Slime, and we realize it should be dead either way because of Elish Norn, and we fix that matter. I untap and draw, and I swing my sower at Malcolm, convincing him that if he lets the damage go through, it's for the greater good, as it also hurts Dr. Martin. Unfortunately, Dr. Martin has a response though, flashing out a creature which lets him exile two permanents. He hits the sower and the bonds. We move to Malcolm's turn, and he casts Planar Cleansing to try and wipe the board. It resolves, but still leaves us with a Dr. Martin who has two emblems. Dr. Martin plays Karn's Bastion, Passing. Ben draws and goes through his yard. He casts his commander, Gabe, in his main phase, passing. I draw and cast Cryptcast. I'm then able to cast Sanguine Bond and extort the spell. I drain everyone for one and gain three life, and the enchantment resolves before passing to Malcolm. Malcolm casts Vampiric Tutor at the end of turn, losing two life to go and find a card to put on top. He starts his turn, drawing that card, and casting it. We see it's a Korma spell, which would have been an awful thing to play with Dr. Martin's Elish Norn out, but it's not so bad now. He goes to combat, swinging some of his now animated lands at Dr. Martin. Before blocks though, Dr. Martin flashes out Wrath, and gets two exile triggers from his emblems. He hits the bell, and my Sanguine Bond, and Malcolm then passes. Dr. Martin casts a Fairy Temporal Archmage, exiling two more permanents as he casts the Planeswalker. He down ticks the walker, untapping some of his permanents, and moves to combat, smacking Malcolm with Wrath, and passing to Ben. Ben still can't find a land, but he does cast Commander Sphere before passing. 
I play a Swamp and use Ghost Quarter to take out Karn's Bastion. I then cast Erebos and pass while Dr. Martin goes to find a basic. Malcolm untaps and draws. He casts Wrath of God to take out Wrath, which kind of works. He then plays out a Rot Lung Reanimator, passing. Dr. Martin draws and plays an Island. This time he upticks to Fairy, looking at his top two cards. He puts one to hand and one in the bottom, passing. Ben draws and passes. At the end of turn, I activate Erebos, losing two life to draw a card. I draw for turn and activate Erebos three more times, losing six life to draw three cards. None of them really help us at this point, and I discard down to seven as I pass. Malcolm untaps and draws, and he swings the reanimator at Dr. Martin. Before moving to damage, Dr. Martin casts Ignite the Beacon, and this lets him exile two more permanents, plus find two of his own in the form of Planeswalkers to put to hand. This isn't so bad for five mana, and he picks his permanents to exile. In response, Ben casts White Sun Zenith where X is three. He makes three 2-2 two -two cat tokens and shuffles a spell in. Dr. Martin then reveals Will Kenrith and Elspeth, Sun's champion, while Malcolm then casts Conspiracy, naming zombies in a second main phase. Dr. Martin draws and floats some mana, down ticking to Fairy to untap the lands. He then plays out Will Kenrith and down ticks the walker to draw two cards. He remembers he should get two exile triggers, hitting Erebos and a cat token. We then see a reduced cost in Elspeth hit the stack, and Dr. Martin exiles the two remaining cat tokens. He upticks Elspeth to make some tokens to protect himself, passing. Ben casts Watley's Raptor in his main phase, and strangely, he doesn't take Dr. Martin up on his offer to proliferate his walkers. He does add another counter to his Vivid Menno, however, and passes to me. I play Cabal Coffers, and activate it to help pay for Masker Worm. It comes in, and takes out all of Dr. Martin's tokens, which also has him lose 6 life. I then cast a Tap Charcoal Diamond, passing. Malcolm plays a Plains, and casts Burial Rites. He brings back the Ruin Scar Demon, and goes to find a card, passing. Dr. Martin upticks Will in his main phase to have the Massacre Worm and Runescarn Demon become 0-3s with no abilities. He upticks Elspeth, making more friends, and then taps all for Ulamog. This means he gets two Emblem Triggers, plus Ulamog's on cast trigger, exiling four permanents before it even resolves. He hits these three, and then Cabal Coffers. Moving to his combat step, Ben uses Crib Swap to exile Ulamog. In his second main phase, Dr. Martin uses Teferi to untap some lands, and he plays out eight and a half tails and exiles two of Malcolm's lands. Ben draws and plays Dread Return, bringing back a Slitic Slime. It enters, blowing up Dr. Martin's Prairie Stream. Ben then plays Orzhov Basilica, bouncing a land back to hand, which is kind of risky. He swings the Raptor at Dr. Martin, who blocks with a Changeling token. I play a land, and cast Chainer, passing. Malcolm draws, and puts to stack Merciless Eviction, naming Planeswalkers. This only hurts Dr. Martin for once, and with nothing else, Malcolm passes. At the end of turn, I use Chainer's ability, losing 3 life to bring back the Forgotten Ancient from Ben. Dr. Martin draws, and just passes. Ben draws, and plays Exotic Orchard as his land drop. He goes to combat, swinging his creatures at Martin. Dr. Martin gives his tails pro-white, blocking the raptor, and puts some soldiers in front of the slime. Ben then moves to a second main phase, paying 7 mana for his commander. I play a swamp and cast Read the Bones, scrying 2, losing 2, and then drawing 2. I activate the chainer, losing 3 more to bring back the slime. I have it blow up Dr. Martin's Rogue Passage, and pass to Malcolm. Malcolm draws and casts Archon of Justice, passing. At the end of turn, Dr. Martin overloads a Cyclonic Rift. He gets to exile two permanents, hitting the Orzhov Basilica, and one of Malcolm's lands. All non-land permanents are then bounced to our hands. Dr. Martin untaps and draws. He casts Empress Galena, exiling more permanents as he casts her. He hits another one of Ben's lands and my Urborg. Mirage Mirror hits the stack, exiling more lands, and he passes turn. Ben draws and plays Grim Backwoods. He recasts Commander Sphere passing. I draw and cast Spinerish Saw. 
I followed Dr. Martin's example, but blew up one of his planes instead of exiling it. I then play Nykthos, passing. Malcolm draws and plays Weathered Wayfarer. Dr. Martin casts Phyrexian Metamorph, exiling two of my lands, and has the Metamorph come in as a copy of the Spine, blowing up one more of my lands. He then casts a Crystal Shard, exiling two more lands from Ben. He then swings the Eight and a Half Tails at Malcolm, who takes the hit. Ben plays a Forest and recasts the Forgotten Ancient, passing. I draw and cast Black Sun Zenith where X is 3. Dr. Martin responds to the spell, activating the shard, to return to hand as Empress Galena. The creatures on the board then get 3 minus 1 minus 1 counters, and I shuffle the spell in while I pass to Malcolm. Malcolm's turn is quick, as he just plays Lightning Greaves and passes. Dr. Martin draws and casts Arcanus. He exiles more of Ben's stuff and passes. Ben draws and passes. I play Solring in my main phase, and then a tap Vesuva, which comes in as a swamp. I cast Chainer, passing. Malcolm plays Dark Steel Ingot, passing. Dr. Martin casts a kick to Everflowing Chalice and exiles a land and Chainer from me. He taps Arcanus to draw three, and then casts Solemn, exiling more stuff. He passes while going to find a basic. For Ben's turn, he casts Song of Fraley's, passing. I draw and cast Crip Rats. Malcolm draws and flashes back on Barrel Rites to return the Withered Wretch to the field. Dr. Martin draws and casts Soul Ring, exiling two more permanents. He bounces Solemn back to his hand with the shard and recasts it, exiling two more. At this point though, the rest of the table is so far behind that we know it's basically fighting an uphill battle and we scoop it up to him, rather than never be able to play permanence again. Game review time. So this is one of those games where sometimes I wonder if we should have stopped earlier instead of trying to fight through it. Because coming back from two Venser Emblems is a pretty tall order, even for three other players. It's hard for me to say who early on was the bigger threat between Martin and Malcolm, but I've often been on the losing end of Illuminarch Ascension, so I feel like when I popped my Nevenral's disc, it was the right move. Unfortunately for Ben, he just did not have the lands this game, and as a result fell further and further behind. Plus, when Dr. Martin started to exile them, well, you know how it goes. This game also highlighted for me how much difficulty my mono black deck has when dealing with a planeswalker. My only outs were pretty much Ugin and Spine of Issa, and as you saw, I only drew the spine. It was sweet to see an Azorius commander deck built around planeswalkers, and I think Dr. Martin played it very well. I know Super Friends isn't for everybody, but Dr. Martin is actually a really fun guy to play against, so if you were there, you'd have enjoyed it as well. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.